Hello, Algebra 2ers. Um, we are going to be continuing um, factoring quadratic equations or factoring things with an x squared term in them, just like we have here when we have an x squared plus some x plus some constant. What you're going to need today is a pen or a pencil or something to write with, those um, foldable booklet notes that we have, and then maybe a calculator, and you're definitely going to need your thinking caps. So this is what our foldable looks like. And today we're going to be talking about the one that is in red. We're going to be talking about trinomial factoring, um, which you may have learned as the AC method or when we have just strictly three terms. So if you open up your foldable in that first flap, um, we have to write down a couple of bullet points. These are going to be our guiding steps to solve these problems, OK? So we have the first step is to write our two sets of parentheses. Then the next thing we want to ask ourselves is what two factors of the first term would multiply to make that first term. And then after we write that in the beginning part of our parentheses, we're going to ask ourselves what two factors multiply to make the last term. And then basically the last bullet point is telling us that we're going to have to guess and check. We're going to have to try different combinations until that if we multiply it back out, we get back the original problem. That's what the guess and check method is. We try a bunch of things, and if we go back to the original problem, we'll see if it actually works. Um, <clears throat> make sure you get these steps written down in your notes, and when we start the examples, it'll make a little more sense. So this is what your foldable looks like for the five examples. Um, I don't have a lot of holes. I don't have a whole lot of space on this one slide in the video. So I'm going to be doing each example on a separate slide following this slide, just so you know how to follow along. But you can do your work underneath each example problem. But we're going to go through all the five examples individually through this video. OK, so example number one. We have x squared plus 7x plus 6. So our first step on the last page told me that I need to set up two sets of parentheses. Remember when we factor, it's the opposite operation of foiling. So I'm going to write that over here just so we don't forget. Factoring is the opposite of foiling, where foil is first times First times first, outer times outer, inner times inner, last times last, okay? Or the opposite of distributing or double distributing. So we know if we're going to be uh, pulling apart this thing to find what it multiplies times each other to get back to the product, we need two sets of parentheses. So the next step on our top of our foldable told me to figure out what two things multiply together to get x squared. Well, I know x times x gets me back x squared. So think back to FOIL. When we had something with FOILing, if we had x times x and we distributed that out, we would say that was an x squared, right? So we know that when we go the opposite direction, we need an x in the first set of parentheses and an x in the second set of parentheses. Now we need to figure out factors of 6 that can add or subtract to 7. So factors of 6, I'll do a little workspace here, are 1 and 6 or 2 and 3. We want two factors that can give me back a positive 7. So I'm going to want to choose the factors 1 and 6. And I need both of them to be positive because I have a positive in the equation and a positive for the 7 in the equation. So now we're just going to check our work. So over here in my workspace, I'm going to check x plus 1 times x plus 6. I'm going to foil that baby out. So we already took x times x. Now we're going to take x times 6 to get to 6x, 1 times x to get to 1x, and 1 times 6 to get plus 6. And then we can combine the like terms to 6 plus 1, which is 7x. So when we look at these types of problems to factor, when we ask ourselves what two numbers multiply to 6, so multiply to a positive 6 and add to a positive 7. The reason why we say multiply to the last term and add to the middle term 
is because of FOIL, because of the FOIL thing that we talked about. The last term times the last term gets me this number at the end of the expression. When I do the outer times the inner, here, let me do it in a different pen so you can see. When I do the outer one, x times 6 to get 6x, and the inner one of 1 times x, you guys, in order to figure out that middle term in the final expression, we had to combine like terms or we had to add the two middle terms. So when we go through these factoring problems, you want to ask yourself what two numbers multiply to 6 and add to 7, or what two numbers always multiply to the last one and add to the middle one, okay? Okay, let's try another example. So now on this guy, we need to set up our sets of parentheses. We know when we have a first term of x squared, we're going to need x in the front for each first term in the set of parentheses. Now we need to ask ourselves, I'm going to draw some workspace. Factors of 16, so numbers that multiply to a negative 16 and add to a negative 6. So factors of 16 are 1 and 16, 2 and 8, and 4 and 4. But we know that in order to multiply to a negative 16, we are going to have to have a positive and a negative in both sets of parentheses. Because in order to take the last term times the last term to get back a negative 16, one of them has to be positive and one of them has to be negative. So in my workspace, I need to figure out if I were to add or subtract each set of pairs. So if I added 1 plus 16, that gives me 17. If I find the difference, that gives me 15. Either way, the middle term that we're trying to find is a negative 6. So 17 and 15 are not going to work. I know 2 plus 8 is 10, and I know the difference between 2 and 8 is 6. So I'm going to choose 2 and 8 to be the numbers that go on my sets of parentheses. But in order to get back a negative 6 in the middle, I would need my 8 to be negative and my 2 to be positive. So the, the way we know that we're right for our answer is if we were to FOIL it back out. So if we FOILed this back out, we're taking x times x, which is x squared, outside times outside, which is negative 8x, inside times inside, which is 2 times x, which is a plus 2, and then the last one times the last one, which is a negative 16. So it's these two, the negative 8 and 2, that I know add to a negative 6x to get back to my middle one from the original equation. So that's how I knew to make my 2 positive in my factored form and my 8 negative in my factored form. All right, example number 3. 3x squared plus x minus 2. So my first step is set up my two sets of parentheses. And then my next step is asking me uh, what two numbers are going to multiply to 3x squared. Well, we know in order to get the x squared portion of this term, we're going to have an x times an x. But we still need to figure out what we have to put in front of those x's in order to get back 3x squared. So we know that the factors of 3 are just simply 3 and 1. So we know that we need a 3x times a 1x to get back to that first term of 3x squared. Okay, so I'm going to draw myself some workspace. Workspace. So this is not necessarily part of my answer. This is just me brainstorming what the possible solutions are because this is a guess and check method that's what other mathematicians call this method of factoring is guessing and checking so the my next step in the um four bullet points on the top of your little booklet was to find the factors or things that multiply to a negative two so we need to find factors that multiply to a negative two so that could be a negative one two or a negative two one and it doesn't and it we don't know what the order is in order for it to work in the problem we don't know if the one goes with the 3x we don't know if it goes with the 1x we don't know if one's negative or if two is negative so we're gonna have to try multiple ones in this workspace 
before we say what our final answer is up top. Okay, so let's just try 3x minus 1 and x plus 2. Let's multiply it all back out or FOIL it all back out to see if we get back what we originally got. Okay, so 3x times x is a 3x squared. 3x times 2 is plus 6x. Negative 1 times x is a minus x. And then a negative 1 times 2 is minus 2. Combine like terms, we get 3x squared plus 5x minus 2. Well, that's not what my original problem was. We need the middle term to add to just a plus 1x. So this one is not my solution. So we're going to have to try another one. So let's try uh, 3x minus 2 times x plus 1. Let's see if that one works. So we're going to take 3x. I just switched around the negative 1 and 2. That's how I started on the next problem. Okay. So 3x times x is a 3x squared. 3x times 1 is plus 3x. Negative 2 times x is minus 2x. And negative 2 times 1 is a negative 2. So now if we combine like terms, we get 3x squared plus 3x minus 2x is 1x minus 2. Hey, look at that, you guys. That's exactly what we wanted for to get back the original equation. So my answer then should be 3x minus 2 and x plus 1. So I'm going to put that up here in my final answer. So my two factors to this problem are 3x minus 2 and x plus 1. So that's why um, I had to section off this workspace because we're going to have to try multiple different ways to solve and not all the time do you get lucky and only figure it out on the first or second attempt, okay? So my final answer is the thing that I boxed up at the top. All right, example number four. So we need to set up our two sets of parentheses. Now we need to figure out what two things multiply to a 5x squared. Well, we know the factors of 5 are only 5 and 1. And in order to get something to x squared, multiply to x squared, we have to do x times x. And now we're going to draw ourselves some workspace. And my next step in my set of bullet points is to find factors of negative 18. OK, so we could have negative 1 and 18. We could have negative 18 and 1. Factors, another set of factors of 18 are negative 2 and 9, negative 9 and 2. So we don't know <clears throat> which set of those factors we need to plug in to the sets of parentheses in order to get back my original equation. I'm going to start from the bottom. I'm just going to plug in a negative 9 into the first set of parentheses and a 2 into the second set of parentheses. You can start wherever you want, but I have a gut hunch that we might want the 9s and 2s before the 1s and 18s. So I'm going to do an educated guess and do 5x minus 9 and then x plus 2. So let's multiply that out. We get 5x times x, which is 5x squared, 5x times 2, which is a plus 10x, Nine, negative 9 times x is a minus 9x, and a negative 9 times 2 gets back a negative 18. Combine like terms, and we get 10x minus 9 is a positive 1x. And then we have 5x squared plus 1x minus 18. We are super close, you guys. We're super, super close. Um, we wanted our middle term to add to a negative 1x and we had to add to a positive 1x. So this was not the right set of pairs that worked for us. So let's try if we switch the signs. Let's see what happens if we do 5x minus 2 times x. Oh, you know what? That's not what I wanted to do. Let's try I just wanted to switch the signs. So keep the 9 and the 2 where they are and then switch the signs. So 5x plus 9 times x minus 2. Let's see how that will change for us. So let's distribute it out. 5x times x is 5x squared. 5x times negative 2 is negative 10x. 9 times x is plus 9x. 9 times negative 2 is minus 18. 
Now, our middle terms add to a negative 1x, and our last term is negative 18, just like we wanted, and our first term was a 5x squared, just like we wanted. So my answer that I wanted was 5x plus 9 and x plus 2. So that's what I need to put in my final set of parentheses, is 5x plus 9 and x minus 18, and that is my final answer. All right, example number five, we have 30x squared times y minus 87xy plus 30y. That thing looks about atrocious, right? So we didn't talk about this in any of the four examples before, but this is going to be a little bit of review from the first way that we learned how to factor in our foldable. Remember how the first thing we learned in this foldable was to factor out a GCF? You guys, if we can factor out a GCF to make this thing less ugly for us before we have to factor it the way that we just did on the last couple, let's try that. What does 30, 87, and 30 have in common? 30, 87, and 30, or the numbers for each of these terms, have a 3 in common, okay? Do they have any variables in common? Well, the last term doesn't have an x, so we know that all three terms don't have an x in common, but each term has a y in common. So let's divide out a 3y from each one of these three terms. So 30x squared y divided by 3y leaves me with 10x squared. Negative 87xy divided by 3y is going to give me a negative negative 29x x and then 30y divided by 3y is going to get me back just a plus 10. So if we just look at the thing in parentheses 10x squared minus 29x plus 10 that's way more manageable to factor and looks like something we did on the last two slides than the first problem right? So moral of the story is if you can take out a GCF right away do it. It makes your life way easier, okay? That's the first thing we always want to look for before we factor ever, is can we take out a GCF to make my life easier? And in this problem, we can. So it's from here that we need to set up our two sets of parentheses to figure out our new expression, which is, I'll underline it, 10x squared minus 29x plus 10. So this is going to get ugly. We're going to need some workspace for this. In order to figure out what multiplies to 10x squared, we could have a 10x times 1x, or we could have 5x times 2x. So these kinds of problems are really, really, really hard um, to start with because we don't even know which set of parentheses we want to choose first. So, my hunch is always start with the ones that are closer, that are closer um, together, the factors that are like have a distance that are closer, like 5 and 2 only on a number line are apart three um, sections, whereas 10 and 1 are the distance between 10 and 1 on a number line is 9. So, I like to start with these ones because typically you guys those are the ones that they actually want it's pretty rare if we want to use the ones that have the 10 and 1 or the um, prime factorization of the first term so my gut is telling me to start with the 5x and 2x okay so if the 5x and 2x don't work then we'll go to the 10x and 1x so we're gonna go on this right hand side first. So now that we have the first two terms in our sets of parentheses, we need to figure out factors of 10 that can go in our um, empty spaces on the right side of these two sets of parentheses. So factors of 10 are 1 and 10 and 2 and 5. Before we get ahead of ourselves, if we know that the last two terms in the sets of parentheses, if we know this guy times this guy is going to get me back a positive 10, but it's also going to add to a negative number, we know that both numbers that we put in here are going to be negative, okay? So now it's a guessing game. 
We know the signs are going to be negative, negative, but now we don't know if it's 1 and 10, 10, 1, 2 and 5, 5 and 2. Let's try, I don't know, let's try 1 and 10. I don't even know where to start, you guys. I'm just going to start from the top of the stuff we listed. So let's distribute it out and see if we get back the 10x squared minus 29x plus 10. So 5x times 2x is 10x squared. 5x times negative 10 is negative 50x, holy crap. And then we have to multiply the two things in the middle. So negative 1 times 2x is a negative 2x. And then negative 1 times 10 gets back a positive 10. Does a negative 50 minus 2x get me back a negative 29? Heck no. So this is not the one. Let's try let's try a different one but let's stay within the 5x and 2x as our first terms okay so now instead of doing 1 and 10 those are pretty big numbers let me switch to the factors of 2 and 5 let's try 5x minus 5 and 2x minus 2 I don't know I'm just guessing so 5x times 2x is a 5 or whoops sorry 10x squared the first thing times the first thing is 10x squared 5x times a negative 2 is a negative 10x and then negative 5 times 2 for the inner ones is a negative 10x again negative 5 times 2 is a positive 10 okay negative 10 plus a negative 10 gets me back a negative 20 but you guys we're getting so so close but that's not the one that we needed shucks let's try another one let's try that one was really close let's try 5x minus 2 times 2x minus 5 let's just switch sorry this is a new problem that I'm trying below that yellow goldish squiggly line we just switched the 5 and the 2 from the one that we tried above and let's see what happens there if we distribute it out 5x times 2x is 10x squared 5x times negative 5 is a negative 25x negative 2 times 2x is minus 4x negative 2 times negative 5 is a plus 10x now negative 25 and 4 negative 4 add to a negative 29 and that's exactly what we wanted we wanted the two things in our parentheses to get back a positive 10x squared minus 29x plus 10 and this is the one that got me there so our final 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 answer the thing that goes in parentheses is 5x minus 2 and 2x minus 5. And don't forget the first thing we factored out as a GCF, which was 3y. So I am circling my answer in green. So that is my final answer for example number 5, the thing that is circled in green, okay? I know this kind of factoring is probably the toughest factoring for you and you may not like this method but I promise I promise 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 we are gonna get so much practice with this in class and the guess and check method is something that I think we all need to learn so thank you so much for taking good notes I'm sorry this was a long video but I shall see you soon